Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to discuss the regression assumptions. Now, we have limited this uh, tutorial to uh, just the three assumptions of normality. Uh, sorry, the three assumptions of regression. So, first one is the normality of residuals, then we discuss heteroscedasticity, and lastly, we discuss multicollinearity. So, there are other assumptions. For example, autocorrelation, then we have uh, endogeneity, uh, but we are going to have a video of, uh, you know, for them separately. Uh, the reason we have just clubbed these three because these three assumptions are common whether the data is um, uh, a time series data or a cross section data or a panel data. So we, we do have to go through these assumptions and these are important for them. Uh, we would have another video on co autocorrelation and then uh, for all these three assumptions we would have a separate video where we are going to discuss each of these assumptions in detail and uh, what options do we have with regard to their uh, their solutions right so if we have atherosclerosity what what possible solutions do we have if we have multicollinearity what possible solutions do we have that we can apply in our research setting but in this video we are going to stick with uh, just the diagnostics uh, how do we uh, how do we check if there is uh, a violation of uh, normality assumption or heteroscedasticity or multicollinearity so let's start with with the normality assumption so we, we introduce uh, we import our data which is auto data we have been using it uh, for our other videos so what the normality assumption um, for normality assumption uh, for all these assumptions we have a video uh, which i would give a link in the description it explains the uh, the theoretical background of these assumptions so we are not going to touch that over here uh, we are just going to see how do we diagnose whether that assumption is fulfilled or not so for normality assumptions let's first uh, execute the regression we are regressing price price is our dependent variable and we have mpg weight and length as our independent variables so remember the assumption is the normality assumption is regarding residuals the error term right so for that we would first have to generate a variable where this uh, residuals from this specific regressions would be stored so we run the regression then we use uh, the command called predict right and what predict command uh, would do is it creates a variable that stores any value that you want it to right from the previous regression so in this case we we want predict to create a variable by the name of error and we use an option of residual so what we are saying is that from the previous estimation from the previous regression uh, get the residual values and store them into the error variable so if i execute this i would know that we have error variable and it's labeled as residuals we do have other options in uh, predict command so if i can quickly show it to you we uh, we can have uh, so we can have the standard error of the previous uh, regression or we can have these other variables so the assumption that uh, the the option that we currently used uh, was uh, was was residual right okay so once we have this residual this error variable which stores the residual values we can simply look at uh, it's summary statistics and we would use the detail option to get its skewness and kurtosis and we know that if skewness value is uh, is close to zero then uh, from the skewness perspective the you know the it is not positively or negatively skewed right and the kurtosis is equal to three then um, again the details are um, if these both values uh, meet the criteria then the data is normally distributed uh, so one more thing that in in some packages for example SPSS uh, what it do is it reports uh, kurtosis value as uh, the given value minus 3 um, so 
in those in those statistical packages a zero value of kurtosis would be considered normal but in in case of stata uh, a value of 3 because stata did not deduct uh, 3 from from the kurtosis, kurtosis value so here we can uh, somehow guess the the distribution of uh, <coughs> the, the the residuals but it is not performing any, any statistical test and in our previous video we saw that we have uh, Skinner's kurtosis test of normality and we also have shapiro wilk test of normality so we are going to uh, run those tests what we are going to do is sk test which stands for shapiro uh, Skinner's kurtosis test and then the variable name which in this case is the error variable uh, a value less than 0 0.05 would mean that the the residuals are not normally distributed a value greater than 0 0.05 would mean that the residuals the error term is normally distributed so the null hypothesis of this test is norm normally uh, data is normally distributed uh, the error terms are normally distributed or the data is normally distributed so in this case we are getting the value of uh, greater than 0 0.05 so we can conclude that the data is uh, the uh, the error term are normally distributed uh, we can also use uh, shapiro wilk test besides in our previous video we have shown that these tests are in uh, in the menus we can find them over here this is the uh, ask test and this is uh, as wilk test okay so let's run uh, shapiro wilk test uh, and from this perspective uh, from the shapiro wilk perspective we are getting a value of uh, less than 0 0.05 right so uh, uh, it is saying that the error term are not normally distributed and that the reason is because uh, these tests are sensitive to sample sizes in um, in large sample sizes they they would uh, and they would be significant even if there is small deviation from normality right uh, so we have one more test which is normally used which is jark barra test but this jark barra test is did not come pre-installed with stata so if you want to use you would have to use install it it is a user written command so we do ssc install right if you know how to install a user written command it would be ssc install and then the command name i have already installed it so i would not execute this command i would simply run jb error and again this uh, this test uh, is giving us a value of uh, p value of uh, greater than 0 0.05 so which means that the residual is the error term is uh, normally distributed okay so moving forward we can do uh, pp plot right and the command is p norm and then the the variable that we created the error variable and it would give us a graphical representation of whether the data is normally distributed or not the the closer the data points are to this straight line um, and the, the the more normal distributed it is if they line up exactly over the uh, over this this uh, the straight line then it is it means that it is perfectly normally distributed now we also have this um, q plot which is q norm the variable name right and it uh, the interpretation is similar um, to uh, what we saw with the pv plot so they, they should line up straight or they should, these 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 dots should exactly be lined up on this straight line right uh, I have given this command of graph matrix, but uh, it doesn't exactly align with, with the normality distribution uh, assumption. But just in case, if you wanted to see the, the relationship between all these variables, what you can do is, uh, if, if let's say if you wanted to have a scatter plot of two variables, uh, then what we would have done is we would have clicked on graph and then we would have uh, created a scatter plot of these two variables using the two-way graph and i have uh, two videos on scatter plot on my youtube channel 
but uh, if we have multiple variables we uh, we cannot create scatter we would have to create scatter plots for each of them separately but uh, here we are going to use the uh, graph matrix command <laughs> and then the variable names and it would give us the the scatter plot of uh, all the variables among themselves so we here we have a scatter plot of price and mileage and then we have uh, a scatter plot of weight and length and we can see that they are perfectly uh, uh, positively correlated not perfectly but the correlation is quite high positively high so this is how you can get the scatter plot of uh, different uh, all the variables okay not specifically related to normality assumption but anyhow uh, now, if we have, if if the normality assumption is violated, what should we do? We we can use the robust option in our regression, and what this robust option would do, it would report the um, uh, so what this robust option would do, it would generate a corrected standard errors, and uh, these would be unbiased standard errors uh, for the OLS coefficient. Or we can do uh, VEC, VC, a boost tap, and we can have different uh, repetitions. And uh, what this uh, means is that um, uh, this this estimation, this data will draw several random, several uh, random samples with replacement, and a regression would be done on each sample, and then we would have an average of uh, those uh, the samples, right? So this is a way of correcting uh, if we do not have uh, normally distributed uh, residuals. Next we move on to heteroscedasticity and what we also call constant variance assumption or homoscedasticity is rather constant vari variance assumption and heteroscedasticity is the violation of that assumption. So if you wanted to test uh, this assumption we would again execute the uh, the regression that we have done previously uh, because before running the regression we cannot apply the test and then we would uh, do the uh, the Langerhans multiplier test or the Bruce Pagan test but before executing these commands rather than using these commands it's quite easy to do it uh, uh, from the menu so we have linear assumptions then we have uh, regression diagnostics and over here we have specification test and we have a bunch of tests over here it include all the tests that we would need so we would um, we wouldn't even need to uh, to use commands so the first stat test we are going to do is the linear multiplier test which is the lm test that would obviously require the regression first to be estimated so uh, this lm test we would have to look over here and this uh, p value and this p value should uh, if it is less than 0 0.05 then uh, then our uh, the normal the the homoscedasticity assumption is violated and the st the errors are um, heteroscedastic they do not have a constant variance uh, if the value if the p value is greater than 0 0.05 then this normality assumption and this sorry this uh, homoscedasticity assumption is not violated so the null hypothesis for the uh, lm test is that the errors are uh, homoscedastic so a p value less than 0 0.05 would reject that null hypothesis and we wouldn't have homoscedastic errors the command you can see it is estimate lm test similarly we have a test of heteroscedasticity which is uh, het test uh, this is basically bruce pagan test uh, right and if we submit we would have uh, the null hypothesis you can also check it over here it says constant variance which means homoscedastic so if this while this this null hypothesis this assumption is violated we would have heteroscedastic error in this case the rule is similar to this one if the value is less than 0 0.05 then we would say that the errors are heteroscedastic and if it is greater than 0 0.05 we would have um, homoscedastic error in this case again the heteroscedasticity assumption is violated <clears throat> now if if that happens 
uh, what should we do? Uh, the first line of defense is obviously robust standard error. Uh, we, what we, we can do is we can, you would have seen in research papers, they use new OS technique. And what is this? Um, it would correct the standard error uh, for that. But again, uh, what other options do we have? Uh, we would have a separate video on that regarding heteroscedasticity. Let's move towards multicollinearity. And what multicollinearity means is that the independent variables are not correlated. So that we can check with uh, with basically correlation, right? If they have quite high correlation, if any two independent variables have quite high correlation, then that would mean either it is negative or positive, then that would mean that uh, there might be an indication of multicollinearity, right? It is not necessary that it would be multicollinearity, but there might be an indication of multicollinearity. So any value greater than 90.9 would um, might indicate a possible multicollinearity issue. So if, if you look over here, a length and weight variable uh, have a value of greater than 0.9 which means that they move quite um, and they, they share uh, somewhat similar information and uh, <clears throat> hence um, uh, th th there might be indication of uh, multicollinearity but the test for this is variance inflation test uh, which the command is vif and for that again we would have to first run the regression so we executed the regression and then we run vif the similar um, can be command can be found over the specification test and if you scroll down you would see this variance inflation test uh, for the independent variable which is vif so how do we know if uh, there is multiple narrative issue the value should less be less than uh, 10 <coughs> If the VIF value is equal to 10 or greater than 10, uh, then we can conclude that there is an issue of multicollinearity. Uh, so we have this uh, tolerance uh, level over here, which is 1 divided by the VIF value. So this, uh, and this tolerance level is more uh, intuitive interpretation. So what this means is that um, 1 minus 0 0.09 that would be uh, what uh, uh, around 91 percent. So this 90 percent, 91 percent of uh, variance um, uh, is overlapping with other, other variables. Only 9 percent variance is available after other variables are adjusted. So the information that weight is presenting is also presented by other variables. Just the 9% of the, say, 9% of the information is unique to this weight variable. Uh, so um, a, a quite uh, easy uh, option for, again, for a solution would be to drop a variable that is uh, collinear, uh, that have multicollinearity issue. So in this case, it is quite, understandable that when length would increase the weight would also increase so what we can do is uh, they, they present uh, almost the same information we can drop either of these variables and now if we execute the regression and run the vif the other variables would have a vif value of less than 10 and that would mean that multicollinearity issue is uh, resolved uh, thanks for watching this video and in next video we, we would try to have uh, a detailed video on all, all of these assumptions uh, including the hetero, the, the multicollinearity, the autocorrelation and obviously the, uh, the endogeneity.